Greetings and uh, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Steve Magua, <coughs> or as some like to use titles, I'm Pastor Steve Magua. I am the pastor at the Church at the Well in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and uh, I'm going to wait a few minutes because I want to make a public statement here about uh, the things that have been going on with uh, my good friend and my ministry associate, Wairimo Kemani. So uh, I'm not going to start off until a few minutes from now. So if you can help me to share this um, broadcast, because I think that there are some things that are necessary to be said from a pastoral point of view, from a ministerial point of view, and especially from a Christian point of view. Um, and I would like to say those things because I believe it is my responsibility. Uh, it is my calling. Uh, and so I, uh, I must answer the call of my ministry because I'm called of God. And so uh, I am going to ask that uh, if you are at all interested in this matter, if you have participated in it in any way, then please share it with those whom you have discussed it with. Uh, and uh, let's uh, discuss it. Now, um, I will repeat this a number of times. I am a pastor and I am a friend and a brother to my sister, Wairimo Kimani. We have ministered with each other together for many years, and I've known her for uh, personally for a number of years. Um, let me go ahead and actually tag a couple people here, and then we are going to get into the discussion Uh, I I suspect that uh, if not everyone, <laughs> at least most Kenyans, are really familiar with uh, this particular thing that has been going on. So if you come here and let's say you are part of my ministry to the rest of the world, uh, which is where I do most of my ministry, this may not make much sense to you. This may not make much sense to you, but... Um, for the congregation that comes from Kenya, I think they'll be quite familiar with the things that have gone down. I am still sharing. That's why I have not really uh, started uh, speaking on it. Please share. Please share. I think that this is an important statement that needs to be made. I don't know if there are any other friends of Wairimu that have come out and uh, spoken about this matter because most of what I've seen uh, I don't know if I would characterize it as statements from friends now um, let me state a couple of things I said I'm really going to repeat a couple of things number one I am a pastor I met Wairu Mokimani first I think it was in 2014 so we've known each other for at least 10 years. Um, and uh, we've done ministry with each other, or together rather, for 10 years straight. So I think I have a pretty good uh, uh, perspective of who Wairimo Kemani is. Uh, and uh, when uh, Wairimo Kemani we met and we started to do ministry together, she um, committed herself to be a student in many of my classes uh, that I teach. Uh, back then it used to be the School of Christ and then it evolved into Ask the Pastor Bible Study Live. And indeed, as many of you are aware, uh, I have appeared on Wairumu Kemani's um, channel. We have done teachings together on tithing, on uh, head coverings, on the blood of Jesus. So I know that for many of those people who know Wairimu Kemani for many years, I am not necessarily a stranger, stranger. Uh, and I'm sure that some of you have even heard her every so often say, Pastor Steve is my pastor, or here is my bishop. 
and uh, she will call me on an issue and say pastor come let's come and make this clear for us so i am one of the pastors that wairi mokemani sits under now obviously we don't live in the same city and therefore we don't uh she doesn't sit under my ministry on a weekly basis but we have a working relationship uh like that um and so secondly i have known wairi mokemani as a christian way back in the days of uh the when we used to do the night prayers back in 2013 2014 uh the prayer closet uh and so on and so forth uh and of course uh wairi mokemani actually was the uh opened a door for me to be able to go to seattle washington to minister in a conference with ruth Wamoyo. so in other words what i'm trying to say is i've known this woman as a woman of god i've I've been in her living room. I know her husband. I know her little boys. I've met her mother and father. I've met uh, a lot of her family when I visited uh, Seattle. So I am not speaking as a distant observer. This is a person that I have come to know and uh, I've had many, many conversations with. And even now, we continue to have conversations even in the midst of all these things that are going on. Um, in the last few days, uh, it was quite distressing to see what uh, has happened. And uh, I want to confess that I have not listened to the recordings. I purposely, once I, I heard, because obviously I'm not blind and I am on social media, uh, but my character is that I try always as best as I can. This is not the first time I try as best as I can never to seek out whatever is trending amongst people you know this is happening about this person or this is being said about this person i purposely usually decide in my mind i will not seek it out and unless it is pressed upon me by god and in a very extraordinary way i just do not so i will i want you to know i've not listened to the recordings and i've done it purposely and uh because i know for 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 instance I'm able to know what was said in the recordings just by looking at the comments that are being made on social media. So I don't really need to listen to the recordings themselves. I know the content of them. I know the accusations that are being made. I now have enough information just by looking at all the things that people are saying that I have a pretty good idea of what is going on. But I have chosen not to re listen to the recordings and I will not ever. I just choose not to. Uh, and I will tell you why as I go along. But anyway, I've been very distressed because Wairumo is my friend. And I love her. And uh, she is highly esteemed in my heart. She is a good friend. And I have known her as a woman of God, not for one week or two weeks or three weeks. I have known her as a woman of God for 10 years. And so therefore... Uh, even in this moment of great storm and even in what I would call up a great slip up on her on her part, nevertheless, uh, my witness, the Holy Spirit in me, my witness of her has not changed. And so I want to speak to you all as a pastor. I'm not speaking to Wairumo Kemani. I'm having conversations with Wairumo Kemani privately. But I want to speak to the body of Christ. I want to speak to the church. And I know I'm not a celebrity uh, like my friend Wairimo or like the, the people that are involved in this case. But nevertheless, I'm a pastor and for whatever reason, God has put me in her life and in the life of those who associate with her. And therefore, woe to me if I do not express what I believe is the heart of God in this matter. So if you are here to hear more gossip, you will be very disappointed. If you are here to, to have somebody being torn apart and being shamed, you will be very disappointed. I am not here to do that. I am here to speak concerning the heart of God on the matter of Wairimo Kemani and everything that is surrounding this uh, scandal that has come up. Now, uh, based on what I know, I will say this. Uh, has Wairimo Kemani, uh, you know, done something that is wrong? Absolutely. Okay. And I will tell you what it is, and it is not the recording. First of all, I believe her. 
because she's my friend and because I've known her for many years, I believe her when she says she did not record it. Now, it's up to you whether you do or you do not. You know, some people say, ah, no, 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 no. I don't care. I believe the testimony of somebody when they tell me something and look me straight in the eye. This is what happened. I believe them. And unless I have other evidence, I don't speculate. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I've, there are some things that I've just learned over life. I don't need to speculate. I don't need to imagine. I just take your word for it unless evidence is produced to the opposite. Okay? And I also go with the witness that God has put in me over a period of time. I don't go off of just a, a moment of time. If any of us were to be judged based on what we do off of a moment in time, none of us would stand. I have broken trust in uh, a number of occasions of my life because many people are saying, oh, the trust is broken. Yes, yes, for many of you, the trust is broken. Uh, but uh, first of all, for many of you, the, tr the trust is broken based on some preconceived idea. She recorded it. She meant to do this, no, no matter. For me, I don't believe that that is what happened. But again, I have my, my own personal opinion, even as a pastor, and you have your own personal opinion. Now, this is where I think, and I believe clearly from a biblical point of view, I can say, and I know that I can say, and I've said it to Wairimo, and I will continue saying it, and I will say it to any Christian, the point is not the recording. The point is the gossip. The point is the gossip. And I want you all to hear me well. The sin, there is no sin in the Bible of recording someone. There is no sin in the Bible of reporting what you recorded. The sin, according to the Bible, would be the gossip. The gossip. Okay? The gossip, and what is gossip? Gossip is when somebody comes to you to share information about someone else or something else for the purposes of either whatever their, their goal is, but the goal is not, uh, they are not coming to you to, to share that information so that you can help them to, to deal with it, to overcome it. As a Christian, let alone as a minister, as a Christian, when somebody begins to tell you things about another person, about another situation, what we ought to do, and the standard in the Bible is, you need to stop that person and say, wait a minute. First of all, don't tell me about another person unless they are there to corroborate what you're saying. But if you want to tell me what you are going through, the pain you are going through, or the, the burden you are going through, and you want me to pray with you, you want me to counsel you, sure. But anything that you tell me of a third party, they need to be in the room. And so here is a counsel that I always give as a pastor. And this, uh, by the way, what Wairimo Kemani has done here is not a strange thing. This happens way too often. If many of you would just admit you do this all the time in church, church ladies, pastor's wives, pastors, elders, deacons, you do this all the time. We do this all the time. I've done it. Where somebody calls me, hey, do you know what I had? Do you know what I had? And you'll start to listen because it's chai, as you call it. Eh? It's gossip. It's, it's spicy. You want to hear it. So I want to declare that that is where I see, and that is what I've told Wairimo, this is the place that you need to deal with. The fact that you can listen to somebody else's chai and not stop them immediately and say, wait a minute, don't say another word. Now that I know that you're going to tell me about this other person, don't say another word. Let me call them on a three-way or let's organize to call them and then you can say these things about them while they are listening. So this is general counsel for all of us. Because all of us, well, maybe not all of us, maybe some of you are much better than, than the rest of us. All of us have done it one time or another. You listen to a story. And that's why I said at the beginning, I purposely choose as best as I can. Whenever I hear there is gossip going on, I purposely choose to ignore it. Not because I'm not interested in gossip. I'm a man. I'm a human. I like gossip. I like to hear the spicy stories. But I know where it will lead. I know where it will lead, and so I don't want to defile myself, so I usually choose to stay ignorant. And that's why even when I had, oh, there's this recording, oh, let's go to Telegram. So I know the back story. I said, I'm not going to get that Telegram. I'm not going to listen to, to the gossip. I'm not going to seek it out. I'm not going to listen to it. In any case, I know that you will all put it out there 
on social media and I'll be able to figure out, read between the lines and know what is going on. So um, the sin is in receiving gossip. The sin is in talking gossip. The sin. So the other things are just gravy. The other things are just consequences of gossip. When gossip begins to fester, it must produce a fruit. And the fruit is somebody's reputation is going to be destroyed. Whether the things that are being said are actually factual or not, somebody's reputation, somebody's life, somebody's marriage, somebody's uh, character, somebody's ministry, somebody's thing is going to be destroyed one way or another. And so that has been very hard on my heart. That has been very painful for me, not just for my friend Wairimo, but also for the other parties, which I'm choosing not to mention by name because you all know them. It is not a good thing. It is not a pretty thing. And, uh, you know, people are saying, oh, uh, the friend, friend's trust has been broken. But I want to ask you something, dear friends. Whose trust has most been broken in this whole matter? I want you to think about it for a moment. I am purposely not looking at the comments. So I'm not going to answer anybody's uh, comments. I'll, I will look at the comments later. Whose trust has been broken the most in this whole matter? I want you to think about it for a moment. Is it the lady that was giving the information that was allegedly being interrogated? Is it the bishop on the other side? Is it the wife of the bishop? Is it my good friend Wairimo Kimani? Or is it the public? Who has, whose trust has been broken the most? If you said any of those things, I want, to, I want you to know you are wrong. The most trust that has been broken is God's trust. It is God who is most hurt in all of this. It is Jesus who is most hurt with all of this. It is the Holy Spirit who is most grieved in all of this. Now let me ask you the second question. How many times in all the conversations that you've heard on social media for the last few days, how many times have you had anybody concerned about the heart of God. I'm sure they are there. But generally what I've seen from Christians, from ministers, from all kinds of people, I have had very little of anybody concerned about the glory of God. About the honor of God. Very little. Paul said to the Jews at Rome. He said, because of you, the name of God is blasphemed. And so I want to challenge everyone, including myself. I want to challenge everyone involved. Wairi Mokemani, the parties involved, and every one of you that has taken part in these conversations in any way, on social media or everywhere, in person, on phones. I want to ask you, Christians, I'm only talking to Christians now. I'm not going to, to address unbelievers. I'm a pastor. I have nothing to say to unbelievers in this case, except maybe if God gives me an opportunity to say to them, are you in a place where you have found that Jesus Christ is worthy of your life and you are willing to surrender to him? That is the only conversation I can have with an unbeliever. I'm addressing my fellow believers. Are you concerned about the glory of God? Are you concerned about the honor of God? Are you concerned that the name of God is right now being blasphemed in the worst ways by unbelievers? And what is your part in it? What is your part in it? See, that's what I'm concerned about the most. I love Wairumu Kemani, but I love Jesus more. I love members of the body of Christ, but I love God more. And it is Jesus who is most hurt in all of this. It is God who is most hurt in all of this. Because all of the parties involved are members of the body of Christ. Now, I know some of you say, oh, that one is not saved. Or that one. That's not mine to judge. I go by what testimony somebody gives and who they represent. And I know for a fact that my friend Wairumu Kemani is a minister of Christ. I know that God has worked through her mightily over many, many years, even before I ever knew her. So I know she's a servant of God. 
The rest of the parties, I don't know them personally, so I cannot speak so much about their testimony. But they give a testimony that they are believers, that they are ministers, so I believe that also. And therefore, it is the name of Christ that is being blasphemed. And so when people open their mouth to say, oh, trust has been broken. All right, I, I agree with you. Trust has been broken one way or, that or another. But what does the word of God say to you, Christian believer, concerning when trust is broken? Moreover, how many times have you broken trust yourself? How many times have you failed the God who holds his, your life in his hands? Before we even go to how many times have you broken the trust of your family, your friends, your spouse, your children. Is there any of us that can sit here or stand here and say, at least I know I am not a sinner. At least I know I have never broken anybody's trust. At least I know I'm not as evil as some people are trying to, oh, because this is what is happening. Whenever you see somebody say, oh, that is so evil. What you are really saying is, at least I'm not evil as her. You know, I'm reminded of a story in the Bible. I'm reminded of a story in the Bible where Jesus said two people went to pray. And so this is a story for all of us to consider in all this matter. Two people went to the, to, to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, a religious leader. The other one was a, uh, um, a sinner, a tax collector of some kind. The worst of the worst. And the Pharisee prayed and he said, Oh God, how thankful I am in the name of Jesus that I am not a sinner like that man over there. You know how we do? We put King James Version in there too. And thou art great, O God. And I pay my tithes every month and ah, I, I, I fast and I do all these and I am thankful, God, that you have anointed me and made me greater. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And he moved on. And here comes the other man. This is Jesus telling the story. This is not my made-up story. This is Jesus' story. And Jesus says, the sinner could not even look toward heaven. He began to beat his chest. And he began to say, oh God, oh God, have mercy on me i am a wretched miserable sinner and i'm not even worthy to stand before your presence he did not even say in jesus name he just walked away he just expressed the frailty the weakness of his own human nature his sinfulness and he walked away and jesus says of the two only the second one was justified before god only the second one was justified before God. Why? First of all, because he did not try to justify himself. Secondly, because he recognized the enormity of his own sin. He was not concerned about the other guy and how much of a sinner he is more than me or less than me. He was just concerned, I am a sinner and I'm not worthy. And I know that in the end, it's not what people say about me. It's not what people do about me. It's not how popular or unpopular I am. It is you, God. You hold my eternity in your hands. I know you expect me to just come and make a political or so I'm here to preach. I'm here to preach. Everything that happens in our lives is an opportunity to refocus our eyes onto Christ. If you came here to hear some more gossip, you will be very disappointed. If you, hear, you came here expecting for me to say, Wairi Mokemani is going to hell, you will be very disappointed. I'm here to preach Christ. That's my statement on Wairi Mokemani. My, st my statement on Wairimoke money is this. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. That's my statement. That's what I told Wairimoke money. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And allow him to examine your heart and to illuminate your heart. And anything in there that is not right, Wairimo, only Christ can fix it. No man can fix it. You alone, even you yourself cannot fix it. Only Christ can fix it. And those other parties, only Christ can help them. 
And it doesn't matter how much you condemn them or not condemn them or support them or not support them. Your condemnation or your support means nothing. It will account for nothing. Only God matters. And none of you and not even me are God's spokesman on what he will do. Check yourself first. Wairi Mukemani is my friend. I will not deny that. I, I will just, do I think that she did something wrong? Yes, clearly I can see that. Do I think she recorded? I don't think so. But nevertheless, it was still wrong to have that conversation. If any member of my local church came to me and told me, well, this person, I stopped them. I said, wait a minute. Was the other person whom you are speaking about there? No, that's gossip. That is slander. That is wrong. That is evil. It's a sin that Jesus died for. Therefore, humble yourself, confess your sin, repent as the grace of God is given to you, be cleansed, be purified, stand up, walk forth, walk in God, walk in the spirit, walk in holiness. Don't sit there, don't stay there. You're not defined by that sin. You're not defined by that failure. You are defined by you are standing in Jesus Christ. That's how you're defined, if you're a Christian, that is. And I know that my friend Wairu Mukemani is a Christian. Oh, but she's not perfect. <laughs> Throw me in the hole too, because I am not perfect. You, you, you don't know how not, how not perfect I am? Go have a conversation with my wife. Call my eight children and tell me, tell me, tell me the truth about your father. Tell us what he does when we cannot see him, when he's not on, 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 on Ask the Pastor, when he's not at the pulpit in a, in a nice suit. Tell us. They can tell you they have known me and they will tell you this man is, if, if it was dependent on his character or behaviors, he will not make it. See, that's why for me, I have and I'm continuing to learn that when I see people fall, when I, people, when I see people stumble, my first reaction is not to say, oh, oh, how, how, you, you. No, my first thing is to say, oh, my goodness, that is a reflection of me. I have done that. I've done it even worse. And the only, the only reason why uh, it has not even been magnified is, not because I, is because I'm not a celebrity. Otherwise, if you knew things about me, you would not even listen to me. I'm not trying to justify Warimo. There's no justification for sin. There's no justification for things that are done wrong. Even the, the, the friend of hers that recorded it, and Wairimo was so angry, and she said some things that ought not to be said or to come out of the mouth of a minister. Still, that's human reaction. That's human response, right? But it's still not justifiable. And, and I want to tell you that many of you, most of you, the way you've responded to these things, you, ha you have also sinned as Christians. You also have strayed away. You have acted like the devil himself, just like the evil that you're trying to call out. Some of you have taken advantage of it and you have tried to magnify yourselves. You are not better. You remember the story of Jesus and the, and the woman who was caught in adultery? Let me remind you the Bible. Maybe some of you have forgotten the Bible. So the woman is caught in adultery. She was caught in adultery. She was actually committing adultery. So it was not fake. It was not some, some false accusation. She was caught in adultery. Now, Irimo has not been caught in adultery. Gossip, slander, whatever. Participating in a conversation that maybe should not have been had in the first place. Not maybe, definitely should not have been had. But what happens? They take her to Jesus. So I want you all to take Wairimo to Jesus. Those of you who are so intent on destroying her and tearing her apart, take her to Jesus. Let's see how Jesus will deal with her. That's all I'm saying. Let's take her to Jesus because you are not qualified to be the judge. You are not. And I'm not qualified to be the judge either. And Bishop so-and-so is not qualified to be the judge either. Only Jesus is qualified because only Jesus has not sinned. So they take her to Jesus. This woman who was caught in adultery. This woman who was living an evil life on a daily basis. 
let alone this woman of God who has exposed some of her character uh, failures. Which, by the way, it's not the last time that Wairimo will slip up in this life. Nor anyone. Not Apostle. I see you, Apostle Eunice Mukuria. I know you've slipped up every now and then. We may not know about it, but your husband knows about it. Your children know about it. Those around you know about it. And if nobody knows about it, God knows about it. But here, here is this woman of God. Oh, no, let's talk about the woman in adultery. She's not a woman of God. She's brought to Jesus. She is guilty. She is guilty of adultery. And the man said to Jesus, this woman, we caught her in adultery. The law says we must stone her to death. That's what the law says. What do you say, Jesus? And Jesus is drawing on the ground. I don't think he was really thinking about it. He already knew what he was going to do. He already knew what his mission was. He already knew what the mission of a Christian is. Saying, okay, she's guilty. No, no, no question about it. She's guilty. She's guilty. She's guilty. Yes. So, let's do this very quick. Whoever has not sinned, cast the first stone. They already had the stones in their hands. Cast the first stone. And then Jesus looked down and he continued drawing. I don't know what he was drawing on the, on the ground. Maybe he was drawing the Ten Commandments or maybe he was drawing a little stick man or he maybe he was drawing. I don't know what he was drawing, but he was drawing something. Waiting for the first person who has not sinned to cast the first stone. Now, of course, this applies even in the origin of this whole story, right? Because this is what should have happened in the, even the, in the first story, right? Even with Wairimo Kemani, even with whoever was telling the story, even with those who are listening and recording, this is what... But now, because now we catch it here, we cannot now say, no, 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 because it didn't happen over there, it, it must not happen over here. We must continue uh, cycling the viciousness, cycling the, the, the evil, since it, it, it wasn't caught at first. Well, Jesus could have said the same, well, you should have, uh, first of all, prevented her from committing adultery. Where's the man, by the way? Where's the guy she was committing adultery with? Where is the man who she was committing adultery with? Why have you brought only one person to the judgment seat? Were there not others involved? So they are thinking about all this. And when, they, and when the, the Holy Spirit began to penetrate through the word of God, because you see, this is why I'm telling you, focus on Jesus. When you hear all these things, first of all, when you hear something terrible, call on the name of Jesus. Get on your knees, oh God. Oh God, first of all, I am concerned that your name will be blasphemed. So God, could you step into this situation? How many of you honestly called on the name of Jesus when you heard about these things? How many of you, first of all, downloaded tele Telegram, went and listened to it, and then went on to propagate it, and yet you are there condemning, and you are there saying that you are a better person? How many of you? How many of you actually prayed about it? How many of you have fasted about it? So don't sit there as if you are the righteous one when you yourself took the evil and you multiplied it. If you didn't pray about it, if you didn't fast about it, if you didn't call it the name of God, you are part of it now. You are part of it. I know many people don't want to hear that, but it is what it is. The people who crucified Jesus, there were two parties that crucified Jesus. There was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who planned it, who connived, who strategized it. And then there was the crowd. The crowd, when they woke up that morning, they did not know they were going to go and crucify Jesus. They did not plan it. They did not premeditate it. But in the heat of the moment, they all got caught up in the strategies of the Pharisees. And they all cried out together, crucify him of course except the disciples of jesus the only people who were not crying out crucify him was the disciples of jesus the mother of jesus and the women who used to work with jesus they were the only ones who were like oh god and of course we are told about the women in jerusalem who are crying for jesus and saying oh he has done nothing wrong but we're not saying that there is nothing wrong here 
and welcome Wairimu Kemani. Thank you for being here. I didn't talk, I didn't actually expect you that you were going to be here, but you are welcome, Wairimu. So the woman accused of adultery, Jesus tells the people, if you have not sinned, cast the first stone. And after a while, the older people were the first ones to drop their stones and walk away because as the Holy Spirit was working in their hearts, they began to remember all the times that they had sinned, all the times that they had failed, all the times that they were worthy themselves to be stoned, all the times that they had cheated on their spouses, all the times that they had sent secret DM messages, all the time that they had thought murderous thoughts that were worthy of judgment. They thought about they had done it for a long time and they realized this woman is no worse than us. In fact, in many cases, we are worse than her. They dropped their stones, they went. But the younger people, because they were more passionate and you know younger people are prouder, they did not realize. It took them a while for them to sink in that you are just as bad or worse. And eventually, everybody walked away. Because nobody was worthy to make the judgment. And Jesus asked the woman, where are the people who are condemning you? And he said, they are not here. And Jesus says, I do not condemn you either. But go and sin no more. Otherwise, something worse will happen to you. And I would say that directly. Even Wairimo is here. I would say that the very same thing, Wairimo. Jesus does not condemn you. The whole of Kenya may condemn you. Jesus does not condemn you. Now, of course, the body of Christ should not condemn you. But many who say they are the body of Christ, and I want to believe that they are, do. But I am telling you right here, right now, Jesus does not condemn you. And interestingly, he does not condemn them either. But he gives us an opportunity to look at the matter and say, why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus die? Jesus died to save sinners. Paul says, of which I am the worst. I know for a fact, Wairimo, this one instance, which is being magnified 10 times, 10,000 times over, is not anything close to some of the things or most of the things that I have ever been involved in, in my failure. And so that is why for me, I cannot find it in my heart. Even if I was to listen to the recordings which I've told the people here, I chose not to listen to them because I wanted to, my mind to be sober as I thought about it. I, know I, I knew I was going to receive all the information on social media, so I decided I don't need to listen to that. I will just read between the lines. But above all things, brothers and sisters, when you are thinking about this issue, remember, first of all, who we are. We are the body of Christ. We are the servants of the living God. And Wairimo Kemani, at least I can give a personal testimony that I have known her for more than 10 years. We have ministered together for more than 10 years. I know. I, it's not something I was told. It's not something I've watched a celebrity. I'm not here because Wairimo is a celebrity and she is. For me, Wairimo is not a celebrity. At least I didn't know Wairimo was a celebrity. When I've sat in her house, when I've talked with her mother or her father, it has not been as a celebrity. Wairimo is just a friend of mine. And not only that, by whatever grace God has put in my life, Wairimo often has come to me and said, you are my pastor, advise me, counsel me. And I know that I'm able to correct her when, when it needs to be. I'm able to motivate her and inspire her. When, when when, so, so for me, there is no cloud of celebrity here. It's just a person, a heart, a soul, a lover of Christ and a lover of people. So my statement on all of this is this. Has there been sin in this situation? A whole lot of sin. Starting with Wairimu herself, with the lady who was speaking with her, with the one who recorded it, with whoever spread it, with the ones who are being exposed, because there was things coming out. I don't know why God allowed it to go like that, but things came out. So there is a whole lot of sin 
for everybody's plate. There is a whole lot of wrongdoing in this whole matter. It's just the truth. A whole lot. But the question is this. What about God? Christians. I'm speaking to Christians. I'm a pastor. What about God? What about Christ? What about the Holy Spirit? Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve. Are we remembering that when as a minister I stand up and I'm rejoicing and putting all kinds of emojis on social media in front of unbelievers? Am I remembering who I am? If I need to, to rebuke Wairimu and to say tough words, how can I not, why not call her or just go into her, uh, her, her, social, uh, her private media and speak to her there and tell her all the bitter things I feel? But as a Christian, as a Christian, I am challenging Christians. I'm saying to you, Christians, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, but, but she started it. Don't be a little child now because I have children. I have eight of them. I go to my son. What are you doing? Why, why, are, you, why, are, you, why, why are you mishandling your sister? Oh, but she started it. So what should I do first? I ask him. I always ask my son that. What should I do first? Do you want me to slap your sister across the face because she started it first? You are the older one. You are the bigger one. What do you want me to do, son? And even my 12-year-old son says, well, you need to deal with me because I'm the one who is right now in the driver's seat of this chaos. So I am calling on you Christians and I'm asking you, you are in the driver's seat right now. Many of you that I know by name, you have been prayed for, you have given testimony how God has used Wairimo in your life, but right now, you are not even ashamed to be the person who is calling her a witch. Was she a witch when she prayed for you that time? Many of you have given her so many secrets of your life and she has kept the trust. But now, in this moment when there is that accusation that trust has been broken, all the other times are forgotten. And you see, people do this even in marriages. People come and sit before us as pastors. And they, they want to, they wanna, it is true that this one is hurtful. This is the one that she did. But what about all the other times for 20 years when this person held trust was that not valuable? Now, in the world of men and in the world of the flesh, it only takes one time and it's over. In the world of men. In the world. So ask yourself which world you belong to. In the world of men, you only need to mess up one time. And you don't even need to mess up. It only need to be perceived that you have messed up one time and it's over. You only need to lose one debate, as we saw last night. As we saw with Joe Biden. You need to lose only one debate. It's over. In the world of the flesh, in the world of men, it takes one time. I'm speaking to Christians. How many times, even under the old covenant, how many times must I forgive my brother? Under the old covenant. I'm not speaking about in Christianity. How many times must I forgive my brother under the rules of the Old Covenant? 70 times, 7 times, 490. That's the Old Covenant, by the way. When Peter was asking Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? He was speaking about the Old Covenant. Because the Old Covenant, that's Daniel chapter number 9. 70 times 7, 490 years, 490 times you must forgive. But what about in Christ? So somebody says, she should admit that she recorded as opposed to saying someone else recorded it. Listen. If she did not record it, it's only going to help you when she says she recorded it. <laughs> See, for me, for me, as a pastor, I'm advising you as a pastor. When somebody comes to me, when a couple comes to me, and one, one person says, they did this, and the other person says, I did not do it. I always tell them, give them the benefit of doubt as a Christian unless you have the evidence and you can lay it before everyone and say, here is the evidence. Not hearsay, not preconceived ideas. We are talking about Christians now. Now, this morning, I have seen Wairimu Kemani's statement in which she has asked for forgiveness 
from all the parties involved, including the body of Christ, including God. And I can say this without any shadow of doubt in my heart, Wairimo, you are forgiven. Not because you are just, not just because you're my friend. Not just because I love you and I do. Not because I, 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 I stand with you because you are my friend. Not just when you are at the top of the mountain, but even when you are in the very ditch. I stand with you, Wairimo, because that's what a friend does. A friend in need is a friend indeed. I'm not only going to, 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 to stand with you when you are being praised. I'm going to stand with you even when you are being killed. And if necessary, I will get killed with you because you are my friend, because that's what friends do. And I'm just asking. Now, I know some of you are not friends of Wairimu. I know some of you are mortal enemies. I expect you to act as mortal enemies. If you are a mortal enemy of Wairimu, please do as, as I think, I, I think um, what, what, do, what do, does Wairimu say every now and then? Cheza kama wewe. Cheza kama wewe. If you're a mortal enemy, if Wairimo must be destroyed, destroy her. Because that's what you must do. But for me as a, a pastor, as a man of God, as a brother in Christ, I must cheza as Christ has made me or remade me. And how has Christ remade me? Number one, the foundation of my faith is love. So even as I'm speaking about Wairimo Kemani, I am more concerned about Christ. I am concerned about Christ. I'm concerned about Christ. I'm concerned about the honor of Christ. I'm concerned about the heart of Wairimo and her, her, her sanctification, her cleansing, her brokenness. I am concerned about what God is going to do in her and through her for his own glory. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm not really concerned about the celebrity status. That can go away and it will not. And it will not really phase me. I knew Wairimo before she was a celebrity. And after this, if she's no longer a celebrity, she, it, it, it will not change who I think Wairimo is or what I think about her because I am motivated by the word of God. That's what motivates me. So I, 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 I think, okay, let's say, let's say, let's say the, the, the accusations are true, that she's the one who recorded it. I, I, have not, I have not listened to the recording and I will not, by the way, just so that you guys know. I have not listened to it. I choose not to listen to such things because as a pastor, I want my mind to be clear. So that's why whenever somebody comes to me and says, well, pastor, let me tell you what sister so-and-so did, I always tell stop them and say, wait a minute. Before you go further, do you mind if we call sister so-and-so so, -and -so so we, she can be here when you start speaking about it? And usually that stops it because nobody wants their third party to be there. So that's my advice to every one of you. If you have never had that advice, please receive it now. Whenever somebody calls you, Wairimo, whenever somebody calls you, whoever is watching, and they say, let me tell you about so-and-so and what they did, stop them right there. Say, oh... So this is going to be about a third party. This is not going to be about your own heart issues that you want me to pray with you or help you or cancel you on. No, it's this person. Okay, very good. Stop right there. So this is biblical cancel. I came to make a statement. Also, I came to preach the gospel because that's what I am. I'm not a celebrity. I don't care for uh, popularity. I care about the gospel of the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what I care about. So, here we go. By the way, I'm not paying attention to the comments because I want to be clear-minded of what I'm speaking. So I've actually shut them down. So just listen to me. Later on, I will look at the comments. So, when somebody comes to you, they want to speak to you about a third party, stop them and say, let me call them or can we set a meeting so that you can say what you have to say in their presence. So this is advice for everyone. If, if every Christian was to do this, if every pastor was to do this, if every elder, every deacon, every woman, every wife, every husband, if you were to do this, we would chop down the head of the snake 
and we would not, not be beaten. Because this is a poison that has now infected so many of you. So many of you are bitter. You are so bitter. In fact, if so many of you were able, you could literally burn Wairimo with a tire. And some of you will speak in tongues, but you actually want her to be stringed up. Bitterness. The Bible says, be careful that the root of bitterness does not take hold of your heart. Be careful that the root of bitterness does not enter there. Oh, but Bishop this and Dama this and, and yeah, be careful. Because once bitterness gets into your veins, to get it out, oh my goodness, it will be so hard and it will destroy so much. So, the foundation of a believer is love. The foundation of of a believer is love now does that mean that a believer when they become a believer they are immediately perfect in love no but love is the foundation upon which we build our faith now just in case uh some of you have forgotten what the bible says about love because people are telling me about judgment about judgment and yes judgment is there but mercy triumphs over judgment love triumphs over wrath so, is wrath justified? Yes. But love cancels. Love cancels wrath. So long as there is true love. Well, but she didn't love. Well, do you? It has to start somewhere. Evil starts somewhere, so does love start somewhere. Where is it going to start? Where is it going to start? That's a question. I choose to be the vessel of love. I choose to be the vessel of restoration. That's what I choose to be. What do you choose to be? Make a choice right now. Make a choice, brother, sister, if you're a Christian. Now, if you're not a Christian, don't make a choice. You are what you are. You will do what you do. But if you're a Christian, if you're a pastor, if you're a minister, if you're an intercessor, make a choice. Either allow your flesh to guide you where you're going or allow the Holy Spirit to guide you where you're going in this matter. And if your condemnation and your bitterness is being led by the Spirit, woe to your faith. So, what is love? How does love behave? See, we are here today. This is the 11th day, 9-11. For whatever reason you are here, I don't know why you came here. I don't know if you came to find more gossip. I don't know if you came to be justified in whatever you are doing. Or maybe you came to seek what is God's word on this. What is God's heart? Where is God's heart in all of this? Now, Irimo is my friend. But I will not justify her. But I will love her. And I will stand with her. Because that's what friends, that's what real friends do. And I, I pray, because I'm so afraid now. I am so afraid. Now, I'm, I'm beginning to ask myself, do I have real friends? Because... The friends that I thought were friends of Wairimo, I have seen how they are behaving towards Wairimo. So I'm like, I'm, I'm asking the Lord, do I have friends? When I do fall, because it's not a matter of if I do fall, it's when I do fall, because every man falls. Right, Wairimo? Every man falls. Now you know this. If you didn't know this, Wairimo, now you know every man falls. David fell. The greatest king in the Bible, he fell. Peter denied christ three times in the same morning like i have never met this fellow calling curses from heaven paul fell so the only one man has never fallen and even that one man that never fell he actually chose to become sin he actually took sin voluntarily he said accuse me with it and i will admit to it even though i didn't do it he fell anyway but he fell for us voluntarily he didn't fall because he was weak he fell because we were weak jesus christ so no man has ever lived in this world and never fallen including jesus christ although the falling of jesus christ was a voluntary falling on the sword for the sake of the people that he loved how many of you are willing to fall voluntarily for your friends see i've thought about this for a number of days and i've said 
what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? I, I know, I know my friend Wairimo, she did some deep wrong. At least in my eyes, just in having that conversation. I do believe her when she says she didn't record it. You don't, that's okay. But even if she had, even if it was never recorded, even if it was never known, it would still have been wrong in the eyes of God. Okay? But God, who is gracious, exposes it because he loves Wairimo. But he also exposes those people. By the way, don't forget them. God is exposing them not to destroy them. God is not uh, out to destroy those other people. God is out to expose the cancer that is in that particular environment in order that those people can decide whether they want the cancer to be treated. That's why sin is usually exposed in God's sight. God does not expose sin in order just to humiliate you, in order just to destroy you. No, God exposes your sin because your sin is what wants to murder you. Your sin is out to kill you. But God is like, how do I save this person from this murderer that lives within? I'm going to expose the murderer within so that he can save you. And everyone has their own demons and their own cancer of sin. So while you are looking at all these things, please be broad-based. Look at the whole thing. Understand the whole thing. Understand it from... Come up higher, church. Look at it from bird's eye view. What is happening down there? Stop looking at it from a human, fleshly point of view. And some of you stop looking at it from the devil's point of view. Because some of you are the devil's advocate. Love. Love, 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 love. What's love got to do with it? What love, what has love got to do with it? Watch, watch this. So in 1 Corinthians 13, the way of love, I, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. Help me, Lord, not to be just a noisy person, not to speak in tongues, but not have love. Help me. I'm praying for me. I'm not praying for you because I know you guys are much better than me. Uh, if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. You are nothing. I am nothing if you have not love. So don't tell me this and that. If you have not love, if it is not love that is speaking, you are absolutely nothing. You mean nothing, you will accomplish nothing, you will go nowhere, nothing that you say matters until love begins to speak in you. So tell me, are you speaking in love? Now, we will get to the point where love does deal with discipline. Because love does not compromise. Love does not condone. We will get there in a moment. So if I have prophetic powers, understand all mysteries, all knowledge, if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Church, are you nothing or are you something? What are you? If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. What are you gaining in all of this? Oh, I know some, some people don't want to hear this. Some people just want to hear, when can we burn her alive? When can we put up the witch to burn? Because that's what some of you are calling her. And yet last week, you are saying amen when she prayed for you. And when God answered that prayer, she was a woman of God last week. She is the witch of end of this week, right? How fickle are you? Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Now, this one is going to cut every one of us. This one is going to cut Wairimu Kemani. This one is going to cut the parties involved in this party, in this whole system. And this is going to cut every person who hears. Because are you this? Are you long-suffering? Are you so patient that you are able to wait the storm out? Are you so long-suffering that you are able to suffer without becoming bitter, without demanding the crucifixion of the aggrieving party? Are you so kind? Ooh, <laughs> kind? Life, love is kind? Love is kind? Are you serious, Pastor? Love is kind? I don't know about that. Because I, I have seen very little of kindness. Not just in, 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 in the case of towards Wairimo Kemani. Even in Wairimo Kemani, love is kind, Wairimo. Love is patient, Wairimo. So I'm, I'm speaking to everyone. 
See, I, I love my friend enough to be able to say to her, even you need to examine these things and ask, is this the way you are operating? Is this the motive? Was this the motive of your heart in the conversations? And if it was not, admit it, admit it, and then say, okay, 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 so it is not, but that's not the end of the road. Boys to men don't need to come and sing the song for us. This is not the end of the road. This is, this is the fork of the road, as they say. This is the fork of the road. This is the point at which I realize, oh, now I, I now know what is going on with me. Because sometimes when people are doing things, they don't realize what is really happening. Because we live in the moment. We are a microwave generation. We live in the moment. We respond to things as they are coming. You receive a phone call like in this particular case. You, you are listening and, and wow, people need to know this. But wait a minute. Before all that, love. Love. Is it love that is operating? Because if, if it's not love, God will expose it. Even now, even as I'm doing this broadcast, now listen to this. As I'm doing this broadcast, as I'm making this statement, which now is an hour long, right? There is a motive in my heart. There is an agenda in my heart. Now, in my superficial feelings, I feel that I am here to express the word of Christ and the heart of God, but... Maybe that is not the case, even though I feel so strongly that that's what it is. A little bit down the line, God will expose what is really in my heart. Because God always does. Love. God, God is a good God. He loves his people. And so he will not allow you to perpetually, infinitely, if you belong to him, he will eventually allow you to be exposed. Why? Because I cannot heal you unless you know the disease you have. That's how God operates. He cannot heal you until you come to realize, oh, I have cancer. I have high blood pressure. But in this case, I have a disease called sin. Either I have a disease called slander. I have a disease called gossip. I have a disease called uh, envy. I have a disease called jealousy. I have a disease called bitterness. I have a disease called hatred. Whatever it is, and many of us have many of these diseases in our hearts. As Christians, I'm not talking to unbelievers right now. And believers, you guys, can you just sit at the back, allow us to have a fireside chat? We, this is an in-house thing. This is a, an in-house thing. We are talking about what's happening with us, what's eating us up. And of course, it's always the other person. It's always not, it's not, it's not me. It's Wairimu Kemani. It's Dama. It's Ben. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's whoever recorded it. That, that's, that's the culprit. Always is the other person. It's never me. Jesus said it this way. Why are you so concerned? Hey, church, church, listen, listen to this one. Why are you so concerned about the speck that is in your brother's eye that you can see when you have a log in your own eye? Now, I'm going to expand this just for a moment just so you can know it. First of all, take out the log that is your, in your own eye, and this goes to every single person including myself. Take out the log that is in your own eye. And this is what Jesus does not continue to explain about that thing. The moment you take out the log that is in your own eye, guess what you will discover? Your brother does not have a speck in his eye. You always thought that your brother had a speck in his eye and that's why you are trying to remove it. Your brother does not have a speck in his eye. Guess what he has? He also has a log in his eye. But because of the log in your eye, you only have periphery vision. So you are only able to see a piece of his log. So you trying to deal with his speck will not help him because he doesn't have a speck. He has a log. But when you remove the log out of your own eye, and then you see the log that is in your brother's eye, first of all, you'll be shocked. You'll be like, oh, oh my goodness, I thought it was a speck. Kumbe, it's a log. So whatever I was doing before was not helpful at all. But now that I just took out a log and it was so long out of my eye, I know how painful it is to take out a log. Now I will deal with you very, very gently and very carefully. Because I know the log that is in your eye is a painful thing. I have the experience of removing mine. So now I'm able to deal with you, not in condemnation, not in you must die, but rather, oh, my brother, I know what it is. I know what it feels like. I know what it is to be there where you are. I've been there. So that now you're, you're, when you're approaching the person, is how, how could you do this? How, 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 how? You, you're like a dog panting. How, how? No, you're like, oh, my sister, my sister, my brother. First of all, I know, I know, 
I, I, even if I don't know exactly how you're feeling, I have an idea of how painful and how humiliating and how shameful it is to be where you are. Because I've been there. I've been there. Let me tell you how it was. And you were able to give them the testimony. And now, all of a sudden, they're able to trust you to begin to help them to remove the log because they know you know. They know you are not wanting to deal with them so that you can remove the log and begin showing it on social media. Look at the log of Wairimo! Look at Wairimo's log! Look, 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 look! No, you know now they want to remove it because they themselves had to have a, a log removed. They care. They are compassionate. They are kind. Ooh, oh, I forgot we were here. Uh, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Take whatever, whatever is served on this plate, please take your piece and eat it. Okay, church? So, if you have been arrogant, if you have been impatient, if you have been unkind, if you have been envious, if you have been boastful, if you have been rude, take whatever you need. This is medicine right now for the whole church. This is medicine right now. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Some of you are so resentful you can feel it. I, that's why I'm not even looking at the at the comments because the, some of that some of that resentfulness is coming through the screen and hitting me and trying to enter me because you want me to be as resentful as you are. I am not resentful. I am not resentful towards Wairimo. I'm not resentful towards Dama. I'm not resentful towards Ben. No matter how much I know what or I, I think I know what has happened, I am not because I know I am worse than all of them combined. I am the chief of sinners. I have no case to take anywhere because my case is worse, has been worse, will probably be worse in the future. So what do I do with it? First of all, I go to God and God reminds me, I have forgiven you, Steve. Oh, Lord, everything, you've forgiven me, all these things. Lord, are you sure? He says, yes, I've forgiven you, Steve. Everything, Lord, do you know what I've done? Do you know what I've thought in between this? If there was a machine that could be put on my head and all my thoughts and all my secret things could be broadcast to the world, do you understand that I would want to disappear from the planet, not just from the city, from the planet? I would never want to be seen again. And then God says, I've forgiven you. Every single one of them, God. Yes, I've forgiven you. All of it. Yes, everything. But Lord, this is unforgivable. I know, I know. But yet, through, my de through the death of my son, through his resurrection, you're forgiven. Oh my God. <sighs> but I'm way worse than that person over there. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Lord, how, what can I do to, ex, to extend this grace and this mercy and this kindness to that person over there? They don't deserve it, just like I don't deserve it. But if you can do it for me, you can do it for them. If you can do it for me, God, you can do it for them. So now I'm no, no, I'm no longer concerned to how can I make her suffer? How can I make them suffer? No, I'm not concerned about that because I've been forgiven the unforgivable. And not just once I've been forgiven, over and over and over and over. All I know is forgiveness and grace and mercy and kindness. All I know is God. I have no interest in the destruction of anybody, no matter how wrong I think they are. In fact, love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. It does not. It does not enjoy. Some of you are having so much fun. Hey, hey, no one is shy. Hey, weh, weh, shy, weh, shy, hey, 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 shy, hey. Okay, could any muskia shy? Shy, you are rejoicing in wrongdoing. You are rejoicing at it. You are having fun with it. You know not Christ, and if you do, you know very little of Him. And the little you know of Him, you have not recognized its value. I'm not condemning you. I'm just diagnosing you. I'm telling you, if you are enjoying this, if you are, if you are having fun with this, if this is what is uh, your moment to make yourself popular and to to show people how uh, you know incensed you are, have you prayed about it? Have you even fasted about it? Have you dealt with God about it? Has your heart been broken 
for God's holiness, for God's reputation, for the reputation of the church of God. Have you truly been broken about it? Because if you have not, then honestly, honestly, and I'm not, I'm not sitting here as a judge, honestly, you have no right to speak about it. Go, go do something else. Go do something else. Go find a meme to laugh at. Go find, you know, something. Because your heart is not the heart of the Holy Spirit. Your heart is not the heart of God in this matter. Because we are dealing with people of God here. We're not dealing with outsiders. We are dealing with people of God. However wrong they are, however weak they are, they are people of God. Now, of course, I know there will be different opinions about that. Well, no, if somebody else, like, they go, that's, uh, you see, <laughs> I have too many scriptures to tell me, first of all, only God knows. So we only go by the testimony that somebody gives and the testimony that we know of our period of time. So anyway, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, this thing called love, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things love believes all things does that that doesn't mean that love believes lies no the all things here and the all things here are the all things pertaining to the walk of holiness the all things here are the things pertaining to the truth of god so love does not believe in deception love does not believe in in nonsense love does not believe in compromise love believes all things that are true love hopes all things love endures all things love never ends love never ends so my question and my counsel as a pastor as wairimo's pastor i'm a wairimo's pastor so i'm i know wairimo is watching because a little bit earlier she says i'm here pastor my thing to you wairimo i've spoken to you in private but I'm speaking openly is that beginning with you because you are my my charge I'm not I'm not necessarily uh, responsible for everyone else but since you and I have a relationship and God has put us in the same space and I'm a pastor and you're a you're an evangelist and I'm, I'm an elder the first thing is you must examine yourself and ask yourself all the things that I'm doing in my ministry are they founded on love i believe based on my uh, observation that most of the time which is true for most of us ministers most of the time you're operating on the on the on on the principle of love but there are times that you just like me just like every other minister allow your own flesh your own self-interest to take center stage and that is when you get in trouble that's every time I've ever gotten in trouble is when I was going well, I was operating well, I was praying well, I was preaching well, and then something creeps in. Either it's the pride of the flesh or the lust of the eyes or the of the or, you know the the last the pride of life, whatever it is creeps in, and before I know it, and usually you don't realize it. It's only when the damage has been done is when you realize, oh my goodness, I left the path a while back. I've not been walking in the spirit. I've been walking in the flesh. And you can tell when you're walking in the flesh, by the way. I'm not just speaking to Wairimo. I'm speaking to all of us. Because all of us are now affected by these things. All of us who know Wairimo. All of us who know her ministry. All of us who are, who are involved. All of us who have commented. If you have commented on this in any way on social media, you are now part of it. And whether you want to believe it or not, I'm talking to Christians now. You are part of it and you will have to deal with your part of it. And that's why I prayed to God. When it began to happen, I prayed to God. I said, God, help me, number one, help me, Lord, to keep a clear mind. The very first time I had this, something happening called shy, I said, God, help me to keep a clear mind. And help me, Lord, not to get caught up in the murk so that I will be able to be effectively helping your people out of the hole that we are all about to jump into. So I'm not just concerned about Wairimo. I'm not just concerned about the whole church. I'm concerned about the reputation of the name of God. The glory of the name of God. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about my own heart. I'm not afraid of perishing. I know I'm in Christ. 
I'm not afraid that Wairimo may perish. I know she's in Christ. But I'm afraid that the relationship of God can be affected in a way that is not fruitful for all of us. So please hear me. Please hear me. Please allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. I'm speaking to all those who have a heart for God, whose hearts are broken. First and foremost, for the reputation of the name of God. Then secondly, for the body of Christ. You are hurting in your heart. You are not reveling in this. You are not enjoying this. You are not glad that it happened. There are some of you that are so glad that it happened. Serves her right. Serves them right. That's not the attitude of Christ. That's not the attitude of God. And if you if you have gone there, please allow God to convict you and you express your sorrow to him. You don't have to tell anyone here. Just you express your sorrow to him and say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry that I got caught up in the in the moment. He is, God has already forgiven. God has already given the grace of forgiveness for all of us. But, so in, in my statement about my friend, Wairimu Kemani, I want to challenge not only her, but all of us to re-examine this whole thing. Because there is much work to be done. Dear friends, if you have forgotten, for those of you who are ministers and for those of you who are Christians, there are more than 6 billion, not the number, 6 billion people on this planet who have not known Christ. It is said that about 2 billion people have professed to be Christians. Now we know of the 2 billion, probably not all of them are really believers in Christ. Many of them are just cultural Christians. But at least 6 billion people on this planet do not know Christ. And they will perish. They will perish. And it is our given call to reach the 6 billion. And so if we are going to be so caught up in destroying one another, in ashaming one another, in pulling each other down, then what is, there, what is the hope for the six billion who are waiting on us to bring the gospel to them, to bring the love of God to them? Uh, look at, I was talking about how you can know. You can know whether you're walking in the flesh or whether you're walking in the spirit. You can justify yourself. You can say, I know I've been walking in the spirit. I know even Wairimo, there's a temptation in you to justify yourself. I know I was doing right. I know it's the other person. But, but be completely honest with yourself. Look at everything. Not for the sake of, you know, showing people that, no, I'm sorry. Or, no, just for the sake of your relationship with God. And when I say this, I'm not only speaking to Wairimo, I'm speaking to all of us. You examine all this and ask yourself, have I been walking in the flesh in this thing? Look at Galatians chapter 5. You can know when you're walking in the flesh. I know when I'm walking in the flesh. And sometimes I do walk in the flesh. <laughs> My wife knows it. Fortunately, she doesn't keep a record of it, at least in, in video form. But she knows it. The person who knows me the best is my wife and my children, of course, and others who are more around me. So in Galatians chapter number 5, it says in verse number 16, so let's, let's allow the Spirit of God to minister to us even in this moment. But I say, Paul says, the Holy Spirit says through Paul, something is, something is not happening here that should be happening with my, with my thing. Okay, uh, for some reason, oh, there it is. Okay, but I say walk in the Spirit, or walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So we all know that this is where we take the exit from our assigned walk of faith. It is when we take the exit and we go into the exit of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. This is what I want you to see. You can know when you are walking in the Spirit, in the in the flesh. Sexual immorality. Whenever you you find yourself, you are watching pornography. You are you are doing uh you know that that whole thing with the text. You are sending immoral text to this person. You are admiring people's spouses. Uh, you are you are doing all kinds of things. I don't have to po point. I don't have to really paint them. You know, sexual morality. You are walking in the flesh. No matter how many times you are speaking, impurity, impurity. Just 
darkness in the heart sensuality sensuality you are being led by your five senses you want to feel good whether it's in eating food or whether it's in consuming other things you know alcohol whatever sensuality idolatry idolatry you idolize somebody you idolize things you idolize money you know when you're walking in the flesh sorcery enmity strife Ooh, lord help us jealousy fits of anger rivalries this one is a big one by the way in our community of christians dissensions divisions envy drunkenness orgies and things like this i warn you as i warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of god now so you know those are the things of the flesh and that's that's not a comprehensive list so let's go to the other list but but the alternative is the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love okay the fruit of the spirit is love now notice that it is the fruit so if if you find if you find listen listen to me carefully if you find that you are a christian you love god you love the word of god you love prayer but you don't have the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit is not very evident that does not mean you don't have the spirit it just means you have not understood that the spirit grows out of a tree or the spirit you know the fruit of the spirit grows in a tree form it doesn't grow in in beans form or maize form you know maize and beans are annual crops that grow in three months a tree a vine takes at least three years to produce a fruit it must be cultivated for three years before you ever get the first fruit. So understand this, especially for you new Christians. It might take you at least three years before you begin producing your first fruit of love. So you may walk for a while before you produce a fruit. Now, for you who have been Christians for a long time, you can walk for 10 years without producing a fruit. Why? If your tree is growing in the wrong environment, if your tree is not being nourished right, if your tree is not being pruned right, you can take even 20 years. You might even live all your Christian life and produce little to no fruit. You have to be careful about that. So it's a tree. Faith is a tree of life. Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Blessed is a man who does not sit in the seat of mockers. Right? Psalm chapter 1. What happens to that man? That man is like a tree planted by living water they produce their fruit in its season it's a tree so because now you know it's a tree it means you will have to be patient and yield and work with god until the fruit begins to come forth so don't expect that i got saved this week i received jesus last month i've been working with jesus for a year i must be showing the fruit of love you you it, it just doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way. If you don't understand the foundation, that's why it can take you 10, 20 years before you ever produce your first fruit of love. So the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love. So I want you to know there are not nine fruit of the spirit. There is only one fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love. The, the, the translators really, sometimes they didn't understand. They needed to put a full call on here. So the fruit of the spirit is love. That's it. It's not nine fruits. There is only one fruit. It's one fruit. It's not fruits. It's fruit singular. But the fruit of the spirit is love. And then he begins to describe how love looks like and tastes like. How does love look like? Love is joyful. Love is peaceful. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is good. Love is faithful love is gentle love is self-controlled against such against love there is no law and those who belong to christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires now for those of you who came here thinking i'm, I'm going to make a political statement for two minutes well blah 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 i am a preacher <laughs> i'm a preacher of the cross I'm a preacher of the gospel. I'm a preacher of Jesus Christ. Wairimo is a vessel of Jesus Christ. And therefore, she's just a vessel. I'm going to use her situation to magnify Christ. 
I'm not going to try and justify Wairimo or diminish her or condemn her. I am going to use this opportunity to bring grace to Wairimo and to everybody involved, including myself. So this is my statement. My statement is the gospel of Jesus Christ. My statement is the grace of God. My statement is the forgiveness of God. My statement is the mercy of God. My statement is the spirit of God. My statement is the love of God. I have nothing else to offer. That's the only thing I can offer Wairimo. That's the only thing I can offer anyone. That's the only thing I can offer myself. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. But I know that what I have is everything that is needed. Nothing else is needed but the love of God for all. There's nothing else. I don't need to spend all my time on Facebook or, or, or WhatsApp or whatever trying to analyze the thing. I saw somebody this morning, let's analyze this apology of Wairimu Kemani. Nonsense. Up, up, analyze what? Analyze what? What, what am I going to analyze about somebody's apology? If somebody says I'm sorry, it is what it is. If they didn't say it the way that I wanted to hear it, that's my own business. They said what they said. If they meant it, they meant it. If they didn't mean it, they didn't mean it. Only God knows. My job as a Christian is to say more grace to you. The word of God tells me you are forgiven. The word of God tells me to stand on love. The word of God tells me not to keep a record of that wrong. Now in Galatians chapter 6, I'm going to finish here. General statement to the whole body. General statement to the whole body. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 here. It says, brothers, brothers. Am I addressing brothers here? Can I address you brothers? I'm not here to justify Wairimo. I'm not here to sanitize Wairimo. I'm here to magnify Christ. Wairimo needs Christ just as much as I need, and you need Christ just as much as she needs, she needs him, especially in this moment. Brothers and sisters, if anyone is caught in any transgression, this is the word of God. This is not my opinion. If anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Maybe I should just drop the mic and go about my business. Is there anything else I need to say? I'm speaking to the church. If anyone is caught in any transgression, not in simple, uh, not very bad transgressions that don't have to do with trust, that don't have to do with, oh, you broke my heart. Any transgression, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual, I don't know who, it, who that is, I am hoping, Lord, that you will find me worthy to be called one who is spiritual. I am hoping that I'm not one of those who is carnal, fleshly, and worldly. May Lord help me to be spiritual. Lord help me to be spiritual in this moment. For my friend Wairimo, whom I love with my heart and in the spirit of God. For my friend Wairimo, whose family I love, whose husband I know, and children I know. You, Wairimo is not some icon somewhere for me. Wairimo is just a friend of mine. I've eaten at her table. I know her as a friend. So help me, Lord, to be spiritual on her behalf right now. Help me to be spiritual on the behalf of all those who have said they are her friends, who I have noticed have abandoned her and crucified her. Lord, help me to be spiritual towards them and not to be bitter or to be fleshly towards them, but to restore her and them in a spirit of gentleness. Lord, I pray. I pray even now, in this last one hour and 29 minutes, that I have not expressed any carnality or any wildness or any sensuality, but Lord, that your spirit has come through in gentleness towards everyone, 
even when I have had to bring rebuke or correction or admonishment. Keep watch. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Some of us have already fallen for the temptation, Lord. Some of us have already done what we are condemning the woman of God for. We have done it more than she has done it because in this particular case, she may have done it once. We have done it over the last couple of days. We have done it since morning till, till evening. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy on all of us, Lord. Bear, oh, Lord, this one hurts. Lord, you're hurting us right now. You're hurting us right now, but I know you're hurting us for good. Bear one another's burdens. Beba mzigo wa mwenzako. Eh, ah, I know. Ninajua katika ulimwengu wa dunia na wa kimwili na wa darkness mtu ubeba mzigo wake. Kila mtu atachukua mzigo wake mwenye. Wa modo wa kuwa wake ni dira kuwa modo wa modo wa modo ge. But in Christ, in Christ now, I'm speaking about Christ now. I'm not speaking about Steve Magu. I'm not speaking about Wairimo Kemani. I'm speaking about but in Christ. The greatest love is demonstrated when you are willing to lay down your life for that which you call your friend. I did not do any wrong. I was not part of this. I've not even heard the recordings. But Wairimo, I am willing to lay down for you. I'm willing to redirect the insults towards myself. That's why I decided to come here. That's why I decided, I'm not going to call Wairimo so we do a life together. No, I'm going to stand and say, I'm Wairimo's friend. I'm standing with Wairimo. Was she wrong? Yes, I acknowledge she was wrong, but I'm going to stand with her anyway. She broke trust. I don't care. I'm still going to stand with her anyway. Why? Why she doesn't deserve it? Well, she doesn't deserve it, but Jesus deserves it. I'm going to stand with her. I'm going to stand with her. I stand with her. Because she's a servant of God. I stand with her because she's a child of God. I stand with her because God deserves it. Because Christ paid the price. I stand with her. Because when I committed myself to this friendship, which I came into because of Christianity, I would not have known Wairimo if, we, if, she was, if I was not a Christian and she was not a Christian. We didn't meet in a bar. We didn't meet in a club. We didn't meet in a, in a murder forum. We met in the presence of the lord we met in ministry and when i became her friend i became her friend in the name of jesus and so if i will ever break this friendship it will be because jesus tells me you need to you need to hate on wairimo you need to condemn wairimo you need to kill wairimo you need to crucify when jesus tells me that i will do it when somebody finds for me a verse that gives me the justification to break my friendship with wairimo because she has done wrong or because she has failed in a moment of time uh, please find it i will do it give me that verse i will do it this is the basis of my friendship with wairimo that's why for me i'm not looking at wairimo any different at all at all now of course i cannot speak for you i can only speak for myself i'm one of her pastors she is one of my little lambs. She has broken her foot. She has fallen in a ditch. I'm not a wolf. I'm not going to eat her. I'm not going to abandon her. I'm not a false shepherd. I'm not going to run away because the wolves have come. I would rather die than allow the wolves to devour her. Not while I'm alive. If I'm a true servant of Christ. You may not like it, you may not appreciate it, you may want a different outcome, but it is what it is. That's what I am, that's what I've learned of Christ, that's what I've learned of His, and I would do this for any other sheep of Christ that the Lord has put into my jurisdiction. And Wairimo is in my jurisdiction. So if you're going to crucify Wairimo, please don't forget to drag me along and crucify me alongside her. Not because I've done anything wrong, but because I'm willing to take a bullet for my friend. Because I know her. Many of you that are saying so many things about her don't even know her. I've never spoken to her. I've never eaten with her. And so you can say anything. And that's okay. 
And I pray that the Lord will give you an opportunity to get to know her personally. You will know that she's a strong person. You will also know that she's a weak person. You will know she's a human. You will know that she errs and she, she falls sometimes. But if you love her, you will love her with all those things. And you will not abandon her when some of the undesirable side of her comes out. You will stand with her still. And I hope that's not just Wairimu Kimani. Those of you that love Dama, those of you that love Ben, stand with them. If you know them that way, stand with them. Pray for them. Restore them according to this word. If, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, hmm, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Oh, there it is. There is a bearing of your own load, but then there is also a bearing of each other's load. That's the, that's the law of Christ. So there is personal responsibility, and then there is corporate responsibility. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows that he will also reap. We cannot cherry pick the word. We have to read the whole thing. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And especially, especially, especially to those who are of the household of faith. See, to, see with what large letters I'm writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they decide to have you circumcised that you may, have, that you may boast in your flesh. I want to skip over here to, um, to the last part. He says, And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So obviously I'm, I cannot continue on with this broadcast forever. Hopefully I've expressed my true heart and my true mind concerning this whole matter. And I can tell you that my true heart and my true mind concerning this matter is first and foremost for the glory of God, for the honor of God. And where there has been wrongdoing and there has been wrongdoing all around, may there be repentance, confession, forgiveness, grace, mercy, restoration. Let Christ be glorified above all things. And for those of you who are not believers, and for those of you who are so bitter, and full of vitriol, may the light of Christ penetrate your hearts and your minds. May you come to know this Christ who has forgiven us, who has bestowed upon us a love beyond anything we ever imagined. May your yokes and your chains be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you receive the grace of God. May you receive the good news of Jesus Christ. May your life not be lived in vain. In Jesus' name. So until the next time, thank you very much. Of course, uh, this is not what we usually do, and this is not as many people as we usually have on this channel. But uh, when you are ready to come and sit down and be taught the word of God in a deep way, you are most welcome to return to both my YouTube channel my Facebook channel, and of course, you can join my Patreon. I'm going to put that up in a moment. Patreon is the place where I actually do the thing that I don't do in the public. This is more of a public teaching. On Patreon, we have a community where we teach only those who we are committed to, and we go very deep into the things of God. So you're welcome 
to join us there. So, God bless you. Wairimo, if I've not said it enough, I love you. You are my friend in good times and in bad times. I stand with you. Even when you mess up, I stand with you anyway. When you're on the mountaintop and when you're in the valley low, I stand with you, Wairimo. Because that's how you have stood with me through my seasons of life. My family loves you. And I know you love our family. Be strong in the Lord. This will pass. You will accomplish the destiny of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. This is just a bump in the road. It may be a big, a big bump, but nevertheless, it's just a bump. The road forward is clear. Look forward. Look upward. Keep on following after Christ. He loves you. And he will complete his work in you. And not only Wairimu, all of you who love the Lord, he who began a good work in you will complete it, no matter the seasons of your life, no matter how many times you fall. The righteous man falls seven times, but the Lord picks him up every time. Have a very good day, good evening, good night, whatever it is. Bless you.